With just a few hours before the Furies reveal, there's still a lot more work needed. Done. We are using every remaining minute to make sure this car is as nice as possible. What I'm doing right now is I'm laying out the width of the orange that is going to replace the original white that was inside the molding on the side of the car. Right. Trimming this, instead of painting it, we'll use the vinyl. I wanted a color that would actually make it pop off of the, uh, off the molding there. That's why I chose this burnt orange. Inside the car, reproduction door panels and various pieces from legendary auto interiors have been painted to match the seats. The front and rear seats were perfect, so we decided that we would reuse them, which is something we don't normally do, but they were in exceptional condition. So it's an absolute perfect match inside. It doesn't look like anything's been touched, and it's all original. These are really, really soft seats. Oh, my, so nice. I know where I'm having lunch. <laughs> Andreas, your lunch is served hot off the grill. That just got back from the chrome shop. But we are now reminded of an earlier concern. Now, wheels and tires. 1920s, 1920s fit? I'll make them fit. <laughs> I'll make them fit. We got clearance in there, but it's pretty tight. So I'm actually uh, taking this sophisticated tool and actually pulling the fender out slightly <laughs> just to clearance that tire. Don't try this at home. Now, of course, repairing and reusing most of the original parts off of Roger's 64 Fury made final assembly a little bit more difficult, but as any purist knows, it is well worth it. This survivor of the 60s rolled into the overhauling shop wearing faded brown paint, but will be leaving all dressed up in coral sand metallic with a white pepper top and miles of sparkling chrome. One-off boost wheels provide an aggressive stance to this big block radical restoration.